Thanksgiving is coming up quickly, and is there a better time to visit a turkey farm? Yeah, I didn't think so. Onyx and I are heading back to Oakdale Turkey Farm, which is not too far up the road from us, about 10 miles away, but they've had a little bit of a change in their operation where now they're actually raising birds for meat instead of raising birds for egg production. You ready to go? Yep. Onyx, I haven't told you yet, but this is gonna be our first video on our new second channel. Yes, my truck still wants me to put on my seatbelt. Is it back yet? There. Yes, the channel is going to be called Between the Rows. That is the second channel. That's the channel where we're going to have some content that is Fan. not... If it, we don't, we're just going to do everything there. It's going to be... A little bit less, not, less um, farming. Less farming. More a little more family. Uh, some farm tours. So we're actually going to post this video to both channels. So if you're interested in the second channel, you can check out the link below. We'll have that up and going by the time this comes out. It's a nice enough day that we can even have the shop doors open here. It's over 40 degrees out. That's warm for what it's been lately. You getting it figured out there, Onyx? Yeah. Looks pretty stylish. I had to customize mine for Bigfoot Magoo. You guys have the first pair of coveralls that I've worn into any barn that fits. Finally. I'll Finally. Would you like to keep them? This must be the biggest pair of coveralls in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You were right, Eric. It's warm in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Bruder barn. I feel like we got to talk quiet. Right. Oh, it's like a library. I was just say, like, <laughs> it's the Bruder there's library. There's no noise of them like gobbling anymore. No. So you have to be quiet. Three days old. Three days old. Three days old. Um, they come to our farm from the hatchery when they're one day old. Now how far away is the hatchery? It's in Wilmer. So okay. it's an hour. Know, an hour. A little over an hour. Um, there's about, there's a little over 17,000 um, in this building. In, here, in this barn. Yep. Yep. Wow. And so they'll stay in here for four weeks and then we move them into two different barns. And so the reason that we put them in two, into two different barns is because. Um, you know, as they get big, they need more room. So we, you know, split the split the flock into um, two groups to go into two different barns. So you've got three active barns. Right. And once they go from here, it's not like you level up each time. You're actually splitting them from here into two and they'll stay in that barn then? They do until they go to market when they're 12 weeks old. Okay. Yep. So what are they eating and drinking right now? It's so quiet in here. <laughs> um, super hot. So this is their feed. Um, it's corn and soybean meal, and then there's some extra like vitamins and minerals in it. Onyx, you want to try it? No. No? Emma has. <laughs> Is it salty? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it would be salty. <laughs> so when they're this young, um, if you look in the rings, you can see, so we have an automatic feed line. That, that's the red feeders. And then there's an automatic water line. Those are the little green cups. And those um, stay in here for the duration of the of their life in this barn. But when they're this young, we put out three different types of feeders. And so that's extra feed and then a wat you can see water drugs too. So when they're this young, um, we want to make sure that they find, you know, food and water. So kind of wherever they turn, wherever they move, they're going to run into food and water. So that's really important when they first get to our farm, um, you know, that they find that food and water right away. She found, she found food. some. She yep, found she found some. some. <laughs> right away. Right mm. away. It's effective. Yeah, you would think that a farm, a modern farm, would be all automation and there's no labor, but we're in here every single day filling these waters up, filling the feeders up, moving them around sometimes, and so the, the manual side of this is still really intensive to ensure that they get that feed. Otherwise, if they don't get to feed, it looks obvious to us that they should be able to get to that water and that automatic feed line. But they, they won't, and, and we'll have what we call starve outs that, that will end up dying from it. So really? we have to start them off with a lot of sources of food and water. So how often is somebody in here? Every morning for a pretty good chunk of the morning, pretty yeah. much. Okay. A few, a few hours. A few hours. Yep. yep. So, so there's nine rings um, in this barn, and um, we'll have my, we have one employee on the farm, and so she'll fill the, 
um, the feeders by hand. So we fill a wagon and we, you know, we just pull it along the barn there and we fill by hand the extra feeders that we have set out. Um, and over, you know, over time, um, when they get to be a few days old, we'll start to take just a couple out um, every day. So everything that we do with these poults is very gradual, so there's not a sudden um, change. Sure. Um, the, the other thing that we're doing is um, these water lines here, every day we, we flush those lines out. So they always have fresh water as well. You know, any, any animal or you and I, um, fresh water is very important to have. Yep. So we want to make sure that the that our poults have fresh water. So we're, um, yeah, every morning, you know, weekends, Thanksgiving, we'll be here for quite a few hours um, taking care of these poults. She's having fun. She, she, she is. <laughs> is it always this hot in here? To, to start out, yes. So it's about 92 degrees in here. Um, the first couple of days, we leave it at 92 degrees. And then um, each day, probably day four, you know, right around there, we'll drop it half a degree a day. Half um, a degree. Yeah. Okay. So really by the time that they're four weeks old, um, the temperature in here will be about 78 uh, degrees. Okay. So it gets, so it that's does, quite a bit cooler. It does. Yep. Yeah. But again, grad, you know, gradual. Everything done um, is super gradual. Sure. Like going over the water line. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold on? Just there. be careful. They, they attack. So they're kind of little fuzz balls, but you can see, you know, their wing feathers are starting to come in already. Yeah. But yeah, they're they're pretty fuzzy to to start with. So how many groups of these will you get per year? Is there always something in this barn? Yeah. So this this first year we have is it seven, seven flocks? Seven. seven flocks a year. Next year um, we're actually gonna um, shorten our downtime and have more flocks. So we'll actually have eight eight and a half flocks per year okay yep so so in this barn right now we have um <laughs> entertainment, right? i caught that perfectly <laughs> i forgot where we were there she's okay she's okay she's okay she went down um, i'm assuming yeah. that's happened before <laughs> it has um so so this year uh 2020 we we have had um, seven flocks. And you're going to eight and a half. Yep, eight and a half. So this year, downtime in this barn is about three weeks. Total over the years. No, between each flock. Oh, between. Okay. Between okay. each flock, we'll have three weeks downtime. Um, next year, we'll have two weeks of downtime. Two weeks. So so we're just we're increasing, you know, kind of our our turnover, I guess, on yep. our farm. So um, in you know between. Between every flock, and in this barn we do a total clean out. So everything comes out, the whole barn gets washed, um, disinfected, so that these babies have a clean barn to, to start in. Eric was telling me about the blue dye yeah. on the backs of some of them. If you look, some of them have a little bit of like a, a blue or a green on them. Explain to me again what that is. Yeah, so when we get these, they're a day old. At the actual hatchery, they're given a few vaccinations. But one of them that they can't get until they get to the farm is for something called coccidiosis. Anybody that's had backyard birds or has raised birds in a, in a farm setting knows that that illness can be really detrimental to them. So there's a vaccine that we actually are able to put into a, just a hand pump sprayer with a little blue dye in it. And we spray it all over each of the boxes full of birds when they're delivered the day of. And then they peck at each other. It's a curiosity thing. They peck at each other consume the vaccine and that helps them to be protected against coccidiosis. That's that's, that's crazy. Weird. That's weird. That's That would not have been my guess. No, no. Kool-Aid or, I don't know, blue mango. So, I don't know what my guess would have been. <laughs> so do you yeah. usually all of them have the blue on them or does it? Yeah, all of them. All of them so are the ones originally. that barely have any, they've been pecked at they, already. Yep, exactly. Yeah. You can kind of see a little bit left on that one. Yeah. yeah. What's this one's name? We don't name them, Zach. Come oh, <laughs> I just assumed they were all named Cliff. Cliff. Why are they in rings? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So we put up rings in our barn um, so that when we place these bolts, when we when we get them in the barn, they're in a smaller area. It makes it easier to um, help them find their food, find their water, um, find that heat source. Um, I don't know if you've seen in the camera yet, but we've got heaters, you know, hanging up. Um, in the barn and so it's important for those bolts to find their feed water 
and heat. So rings, just keep them in a smaller area. Keep them in, so you want them in a smaller area, actually, so that each bird doesn't have the entire barn to get lost in? Right. Okay. Right. Well, and one of the other things that'll happen is, if when we take the rings down, which we do gradually, we'll take these rings down, if the birds get sick or they're not eating right or feeling weird, yep. they'll do what they call racing. And you'll walk in here, and if they're really in a tough shape, they're running all the way around the barn. There's, it looks like a racetrack. It looks like NASCAR. Really? They're doing left-hand turns as a whole flock. If Couldn't you just paint a number on each one and place think, bets? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this helps to avoid some of that, and we can catch some things, illnesses or whatever, a little bit sooner and not have them racing. Because if they're racing, they're not eating and they're not drinking. They're getting sick and they're going to possibly die. As a dirt track guy myself, I appreciate that because the smaller racetracks are always more fun. Anyway. <laughs> and this is dirt on the bottom, too. Yeah, dirt track. <laughs> You gonna make it? Oh, those boots are a little too big, huh? You can do it. Everybody's too many looking. people watching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Coming through, excuse me. I'd like to get by now. Are these sunflower seeds? Or yeah. the shells, sunflower shells that I see? Yeah, so the bedding in here is um, pine wood shavings and sunflower hulls. And why those choices? Good question. Um, we used to do just straight wood shavings in this barn. Um, and one flock, by kind of by accident, we got it mixed with sunflower hulls, which I should add we use in, in our finisher barn. So the next barn that you'll go to, we have that mix already for bedding. But for the colts, we always used to do straight wood. Okay. Um, this is the second time that we've used this type of bedding with the sunflower holes. And we actually like it. It's It seems to stay drier um, when we work up the, the litter. So throughout the life of the flock, we do some tilling in here. It just, it stays nice, you know. So when you think about bedding in a turkey barn, you want it to stay dry. That's healthy for the birds. Right. Um, and that's important. And this, this blend um, just, doesn't get as kind of clingy and um, it just stays dry. Doesn't get as clumpy as sticky? Clumpy and sticky, yeah. Clumpy and sticky. <laughs> and sure. I suppose it's a byproduct of something, I'd assume, yeah. just those hulls like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. where where do you source those from? Um, so we order them from a company out of Melrose. There's a couple of different bedding companies throughout Minnesota. Um, so we would definitely would have options, but we go out of Melrose. Um, where they get their product, I think, varies. You know, their sunflower hulls, I think, come out of Wapatin. Their their wood shavings, I don't know exactly where they get, but... Wherever they need to get it to sell they, it to you? Right, exactly. Okay. Last time we were here, yeah. you were raising birds for egg production. Yep. And then those eggs were, were used for this, right? Right, right. So now, now you have changed. The business model here has changed, correct? Yep, it has. Yep. So you, th these are going to be... These ones won't be, but there will be some on the Thanksgiving dinner tables that, yeah. that have come out of your farm here. Yep, absolutely. So we um, had a flock two weeks ago that went to market, and that um, flock specifically was for Thanksgiving. What makes them different on a Thanksgiving-specific flock? So that flock, the time that they go to market, um, so they, they were processed, I guess if you will, yeah. um, right before Thanksgiving. And that flock will be sold as a fresh turkey, so they won't be froze. Ah, so okay. Ge generally, it's a timing thing. It's a timing thing, yeah. yeah. So generally, um, the turkeys that leave our farm after they go to the um, processing plant, they'll be frozen and then, um, you know, sold to um, grocery stores where okay. you can buy them frozen. But Thanksgiving flocks, um, they're fresh so you can buy them fresh and they're, they're ready to put in your oven. Sure. So it's a timing thing. It's not that you're raising them with a little more thankfulness. Because well, we you're do, thankful for every flock. Well, we do raise them with a lot of thankfulness. <laughs> <laughs> every flock. But. Every flock. So when I look down in here, I see um, these ones are all kind of sitting. But if, if you look over there where they're kind of spaced off by themselves and they're hanging out, are those birds that you worry about health-wise? Or are they just, they're just relaxing that much? Yeah, so they're just resting. Um, so those ones we wouldn't really be concerned about. The the pults that we are concerned about, um, and I don't see any here, but if when you walk through the barn, um, the first couple of days you can find some that are, they're literally upside down and their feet are in the air. Um, they're just lounging. They're just lounging, yeah. 
<laughs> they're, it's like they're on vacation. Um, no, those birds, those poults, um, actually what I do is I take them and I put them in a hospital pen and then I actually tube feed them some electrolytes. Really? Yep, I do. And a lot of times, so those poults, they just haven't found um, water, you know, so they're they're weak, um, they, they get on their back. And so we believe here on our farm that those poults, um, you know, deserve just a little bit of extra care and we we should give that to them so a lot of times they just need a little bit of electrolytes and they turn right around and then they just go back into the into the pens with these ones yep they do yeah. so like this guy here he's even got his wings spread out well he's he's ready to go yep. he's up I disturbed him her him her, her. Her. Should, should be her. Should be all females? <laughs> should be all females, but we always get a few males in here. Onyx, are you ready to leave the 92 degree barn or do you like it in here? Maybe if I was in shorts and a tank top and there was a beach and a <laughs> swimming pool. But... And a cooler? Yeah. Do they um ever escape from underneath and then they get to the out outer side of the cardboard? And then they get to the yeah. city and they terrorize the town. <laughs> Good question. They do get out once they once they um, get to be a couple days old. They can escape pretty easily. So some mornings we walk in here and we'll have some pulse out. So we gotta get them back into the rings. That, that's usually how we determine when it's time to take the rings down. If there's too many, that we have to catch by hand. Right. Right. <laughs> Do you call the local animal control guy when they get out then? <laughs> no, that was me. <laughs> With switching from the egg production yep. to, you call these market birds right. now. So now you, are you partnered with somebody else that's in on the birds with you? Yeah, so you know, most growers are gonna be in the turkey business are gonna likely be a contract grower. They're not gonna necessarily all be independent. Um, I'll use our example, when I was growing up, we were a dairy farm, we were independent, we owned our cows, we, we uh, paid for all the feed and all the energy, and then we got our milk check back. In the case of a lot of the poultry world, um, we might grow for somebody else. And this is the same in the swine world. So um, what we would do is we would contract out. Um, in our case, we work with a, a family, um, the Peterson family that runs Ferndale Market. Um, we're a partner grower with them. And so what we do is we raise the birds for them. So uh, Ferndale Market owns the birds. Um, they pay for the input costs and then they they take the, the income off of the original sale and then we are paid as a contract grower afterwards. And that's okay. how it's kind of set up. So you're kind of a contract grower, but you're partnered with them. Yep. Okay. But what's really nice is we we get to feel like an independent farmer still. We are the lead control of, of everything that happens on the farm. Uh, when we call them, and it's constantly with questions about raising market birds because we're new to it, yeah. they really do trust us, and they give us a lot of uh, latitude to be able to make the decisions that we believe are right for the birds here on our farm, which is a really, uh, it doesn't feel as though we're, we're working under some kind of a, corporate setup that's not sure. what this is this is we're one of what about 10 or 12 farms that are raising birds for ferndale market and it's a very small family type of operation operation and the birds get to be here on your farm yeah. in your barns and you're actually in the barns with them every day so yeah yep. yeah and and i think something that we should touch on too with um with ferndale market is they they're they're unique to the turkey industry and they um they raise their turkeys on the range. So and that's something that, you know, our family, when my dad was growing up, um, that they did here. And, um, but anyway, they, they're they unique to the turkey industry because they raise their turkeys on the range. And um, I think predominantly most of their other grower partners raise on the range also. So when she's saying that, that's turkey farmer talk on the range, it's free, free range. When you buy a yep. turkey and you hear free range turkeys, that's the kind that are raised by most of the farmer partners of, of Ferndale Market. So they can go in and out of the barn. In and yeah. out of the barn. Yep. 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 And um, I think it's important to know that, you know, each farm is um, unique to its to its own. And you have to do what works for your farm and your family. And um, our turkeys don't carry the free range brand. We do keep our turkeys inside the barn um, because our farm here, the location wise, we're surrounded by a lot of water. We have a lot of woods. So we have a lot of coyotes, which are predators, um, skunks. They can all carry um, diseases to our turkeys. The water has a lot of waterfowl who can also carry um, diseases for our turkeys. For, so as a, as a risk management and uniqueness to our farm, um, 
you know, we, we're not raising our turkeys on, on the range. Um, but a lot of the the other um, grower partners that do raise for Ferndale, they do. And it works for their farm and it works for their family. And then we want our consumers to know, watch your labels. And, and so if you want to get an antibiotic free turkey that's free range, you can definitely get those. If you want an antibiotic free and you're not necessarily concerned about free range, that would be the kind of operation we're putting together. We're, we're raising on the antibiotic free program for Ferndale Market and the birds that we sell will be labeled antibiotic free because that is the truth, that's what we're doing. Um, but they're not free range, so they won't be labeled free range. We, we got Dana here, Dana is, is Erica's dad. Uh, the, really the short explanation of why we switched uh, from going on range is we had a lot of issues with range. Um, it, it was uh, disease, everything, uh, all the other animals like coyotes and fox and skunk were coming on the range uh, and it was hard to keep them out. And uh, it was like so a buffet for them. It was like a buffet. And so um, that was when we could go and put everything in a barn and get rid of all of those problems. That was a real plus. So yep. that's, that's kind of why we went that direction. What years did you start doing that? Um, we built uh, the first barn uh, for putting uh, market turkeys in in 78. 78? Okay. Yeah. So was that you then that, that would have? Started yep. the barns? Yep, that's the year I started farming. So okay. that's uh, when we built that, that was one of the first things that happened on the farm. Is that first barn standing today? Mm -hmm. That's uh, the barn closest to the highway up there. Okay. So, yep. so when you visited the farm in the last video, yep. that's the barn that had the egg layers. Yep. So that, that's the barn that my dad is talking about. Okay. Yep. And we still do use that barn today. You do. It's it's empty right now because the bolts that you just looked at. Sure. They'll go in that barn when they're four weeks old. Okay. So y you just mentioned you had all your range out here in these woods. Yeah. As, as a general rule, this is where we had it. Okay. And so the other the other issue that I didn't mention is uh, trucking. Uh, when we would sell them, the semi trucks would have to go out in the woods, and that was fine if it was a dry summer day, but it generally wasn't. Right. Um, and so we had a lot of issues with trucks getting stuck and things like that. We had uh, um, many issues getting the turkeys on the trucks. So It'd probably be kind of the rule of thumb. Every time a truck is coming up to get get birds, it's going to be muddy. It's going to be. It's kind of like every time somebody cuts hay, yeah. it's going to rain. That's exactly right. Yeah. And then you're also dealing with every once in a while you would get a truck driver where it was the first time they've ever driven a truck and so rather than follow the road, they'd follow the sloop. <laughs> and that didn't work out really well. And it well. didn't work They didn't do well. that again, I bet. <laughs> no. I can't finish two in the first flight. You can't finish the jerky? Mm -mm. We got turkey jerky. Now we're going to head to the next barn. And I'm going to assume, see some older birds. You got another pair for a giant? We do. <laughs> <laughs> was this barn here last time? It was, but it had fallen down under a snow load. Ah, okay. So this is a rebuild, about half of it is brand new. Okay. Yeah. So about about a month after we did the video with you, yep. it, it fell down. So you'll, you'll, it's very obvious the new addition compared to the sure. existing part of the barn. So we survived a tornado, snow load, and then we had another barn get wind damage this summer too. Nice. It's been a good few years. <laughs> My first three years of turkey farm have been great. <laughs> Should have become a contractor. Yeah. <laughs> Erica, would you like to explain why Onyx and I didn't get to keep our last really cool pair of coveralls? <laughs> yeah. I think so, I broke my zipper. So, <laughs> oh no. It's embarrassing. Did I give yeah. you a broken one? <laughs> um, really secure. I'm going to give it back to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so one thing that we practice here on this farm is biosecurity. Um, pretty pretty um, industry wide. So we're going into another um, barn, different flock, separate flock. So we want to make sure that these turkeys um, stay healthy and that we're not going to bring in any diseases. So we just put a coverall on over, you know, our street clothes and then a pair of boots um, over our shoes. So, and even, you know, when we had readers in the, the first video that you did, really it's the same practice. Nothing has changed. Same thing. Yep. You same keep thing. the clothes and the, hopefully if there is any disease, you keep it in one barn instead of spreading it everywhere. Right. It's kind of the idea, right? Right. That's the idea. Yeah. And really, truly anything on the outside of the barn that could be um, harmful to our turkeys, we want to keep on the outside and sure. not bring them in. 
Yep. So, yeah, and, you know, you guys, we add in coveralls in the other barn because we do that for visitors. So our visitor mm -hmm. policy is new coveralls. We'll work in our farm clothes in that barn, but we'll put coveralls on in the grow out barns like this one. Okay. Yeah. You can tell they're bigger before you know, Much there. bigger. You don't name any of these ones either? We don't. We'll just call them all Cliff, I guess, then. I'm not that creative. <laughs> so this would be r roughly half of the birds that came from the previous flock that was in the barn we were just in. You said that the third building right now is empty. So how many birds are in this barn? They're about 9,000. Roughly 9? 9? Roughly 9,000. Okay. And how old are these ones? So these ones right now are seven and a half feet. Oh, seven and a half weeks only? Half. They grow so fast, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they, so right now they're a little over six pounds is how much they weigh. That's all they weigh right now, That's six pounds? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they'll, they'll be in this barn until they're 12 weeks of age, and then they'll go to market. And at that time, um, they'll be probably, uh, you know, a little over 15 pounds. Okay. So, so these ones are going to miss Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, they, well yeah. I guess they'll be here for it. Christmas. They'll be yeah, here for it. They'll celebrate. They'll make it to the Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas birds, huh? Oh, you can see, I remember in the last video where you pointed out they they flock around us. Yes. Like, they make the barn appear crowded because they, they're, they're curious and they come up to you where they're all kind of empty back there. Any of you ladies want to talk? Say anything? Nothing? Look at Onyx parting the feathers. If you make a loud gobble sound, will they respond? You got it right. Well, I don't know if you're tricking me or not just to make me look <laughs> stupid. I'd hate to look like a fool on camera. Yeah, he knew. <laughs> yeah. She did yell at him. She yelled at him? She yelled at him. So she, she'll do that. She'll walk in and she'll yell at him and they do react. And them. they do react? I wonder if you can get in the middle of the room. Oh, they do, yeah. Yeah, you get at them and then they get louder. Her child ran away into the sea of turkeys. You almost lost her. Luckily, you could see the circle of birds departing around her everywhere. Yeah, they go she's like so this, quick. and she's here. As she walks, and she's like, she's quick. She, she loves, is. She loves turkeys more than I do. She'll get away from you. No, no fear. Emma, can you make them gobble? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Where are you going? Where are they going? So in this barn then, every day you're in here also, and kind of the same main jobs, but I'd assume obviously adjusted for different birds. Yep, go around, make sure the lagers are cleared out, and then we'll check and make sure feeders are running right. There's a lot of moving parts in these barns, it doesn't seem like, and then it's still quiet, but right. we have to make sure all these pieces of equipment are operating, and there's always great times, just like in anything else. And then we'll just check for health of birds, how they're reacting. We're monitoring the temperature day and night. We have monitors in every barn that will call us if it gets to be too cold and we're out of our range of where we want it to be. So right now it's, you know, 60, 65 degrees in here. We're going to try and get that temperature down to about 50 degrees and raise them out at that time. So you'll get gradually lower it again it, it in depend, the barn? It depends on the time of year, obviously. You know, in the summertime it's harder to maintain that. that yeah. Well, and in, in Minnesota it's such a crazy deal. Every single day is different. So when we get here we adjust our heaters. When we get ready to leave at the end of the day, we adjust the heaters. We have to look at what's the load sure. going to be, what's the wind direction going to be. And we have to it's not just everybody. 72 degrees every day in Minnesota. Right. No. The, the other thing, um, you know, like this time of year is very different from the summertime, obviously. Wintertime. <laughs> Sometimes you get kids in here right. driving the birds nuts. <laughs> um, no, but wintertime, you know, it's harder to um, ventilate a barn. So, um, 
whether it be the summertime or the, or the wintertime, we always have fans going, but that number may, may change of fans. Um, you know, right now it's nice out today so we can open, you know, a few um, doors you can see behind you. So, you know, if it was if it were the summertime, all of these doors on the side would be open. Wide open. Wide Just open. keeping it as cool as you can right, on a hot day. Right. We actually benefit this way because the lake is right to the north. So we get a north wind that blows right through this barn. And sure. It's awesome, actually. Sure. Obviously, the draft coming through the barn isn't as big a deal in here then. Same with the temperature, it's not. It's just not as fussy as with the with the poles, right? Right. With that being said, you know, so these birds, if they were um, like 12 weeks, I mean, you know, bigger birds, heavier birds, I mean, if it got to be like over 90 degrees in here, that's a red flag for us, you know, so we always sure. want to make sure that there's air moving um, in our barn. So temperature is not as, is not, it's critical with um, when we talk about coolness, but hotness. I mean, if it's really hot, you know that can be um, that can be hard on these birds. So when it did get hot this summer, just like every summer, we add in more circulating fans. We'll watch the temperature. If it gets extreme, like five days in a row at 95 degrees or higher, you might have to come in here with an actual tractor and a water tank and spray some water up in the air just to get something on them. Oh, really? So okay. It some just to cool them off. Yep. Yep. I, I gotta try it. I can't stand in a turkey barn and not, you know. No, it just kind of alerts them. They're used to it now. Onyx thought that was I funny. I'd encourage him to do it. <laughs> that was really good. You gotta shake your head more. Let your cheeks flap. Let's see it. <laughs> when I look at the floor in this barn, it it looks different. It's not like the sunflower hulls and stuff. What do you what do you use for bedding in here, and how does that work? So this barn is a little bit different. Um, this barn, it's the same bedding as what you saw in the brood barn when it starts out. But we, between every flock, we don't do a total clean out between every flock. So we'll clean this barn out um, once a year, actually. So this litter in here is recycled, is is what we call it, and um, it does take some maintenance though. So you know, in this barn, once a week, we bring in a small garden tractor and we till it once a week. So um, that- You're actually bringing a tractor into the barn here? We are. And, and tilling the bedding? We are, yes, yep. Yep, and so that'll help keep this litter fresh, keep it dry, because again, um, you know, we don't want wet litter. I mean, that's not healthy. Um, well, that was my next question. How do you keep it dry like this? Yeah once a week tilling it really does um does a lot you know in this barn we haven't had a lot of water spills you know knock on wood yeah but if we were then we bring in um dry bedding and we'll, we'll bed in here so if it does get to be um you know kind of wet or uh, we do have some bedding that we can bring in and add um the other thing we do when this when we bring turkeys in here any flock we do put down some fresh um litter or shavings fresh shavings on, on to, top on top yep. okay and then yep. eventually that gets worked it in it does get worked in yeah so do you use it then as fertilizer or manure on yeah. the fields yeah seems like it would make incredible manure it yeah. does yeah we uh in fact when i moved up here in 2017 was the last year no the year before that was last year i think they spread manure on our fields and we haven't had it since all our micronutrients are capped out Really? So our phosphorus and our, and our potassium are even at, at max, so we just put nitrogen on when we're doing corn. Other than that, we pretty much don't have to worry too much about nutrients. And so uh, um, we now are stockpiling and essentially selling to local farmers that are able to use this and supplement theirs and add organic matter to their soil too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We might have to talk about that later. So, <laughs> so the feed in here um, is more of a pellet form. The feed in the brood barn is more of like a crumble. Um, still has corn and soybeans in it. The protein, you know, level is going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, with each age for turkeys, the ration changes. But your base ingredient is corn and soybean meal, um, and this is just more of a pellet form. So it's a lot of, like you said, same base ingredients. They're yep. just changing the the nutrient levels. Yep. Yep. Oakdale's been in business, according to the signs, since 1866. How many flocks of birds? How many birds have come through since 1866? Oh man, 
I was thinking maybe you'd say you'd have to push a pencil on that and figure it out, but I like the honesty that you're not even going to waste time trying to find out. We, we can add that, um, that Emma is the seventh generation. Seventh generation? Seventh generation. Uh, Onyx and his sisters would be the sixth on ours. So. And that's, that's one thing that I find to be true everywhere is that there's so many multi-generation family farms. And just, just because the farms look a little bit different now than, than the picture you might have in your head doesn't mean that it's not the same family farm that's always been there. And, and we benefited from previous generations growing the operation. Absolutely, yeah. You know? Yep. Like any other industry, as it evolves, right? Yep. Yeah, and you know, Minnesota is number one in raising turkeys. I did know that. Yes. There's a fun fact I bet a lot of people didn't know. Yeah, so we raise, you know, annually 45 to 46 million. Um, just in the state of Minnesota. Just in the state of Minnesota. And I, one of the reasons for that, one of the success, success stories, is because most of the farms um, that are raising turkeys are multi-generational, so that knowledge is passed down. Sure. So. Years and years of experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for letting us back on the farm and giving Onyx and I a tour. I tried getting his sisters to come with, but they got baby kittens, so they weren't going to move. They weren't leaving home, even for baby birds. And they probably shouldn't have brought the cats with. So. She ran away on you again. I know. It, that's only going to get worse for a year or two. Bye, Emma. You bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Emma. See if you can get her to say thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think, Onyx? I don't know, turkeys. I don't know, turkeys. <laughs>